Michelle from the Royal Daily Tea. Hello, I've missed you guys. It has been over a week since I have filmed a video, so I'm getting back into my videos, but I'm so happy to be back. I'm in my new place. I'm still getting adjusted. I'm about 95% or so moved in. I'm still trying to find things. I don't know where things are. My mother came to stay with me. She helped me unpack and she put stuff when I can't find it. The other weird thing is I'm now on my computer. I'm back at work today. You guys, I have like four pairs of reading glasses and I'm blind. What happens to our eyes? Like, I feel like I go through reading glasses and I never know, am I 125, am I 150? Like, I'm just blind as a bat. I've been cleaning my computer screens. I've been playing with the adjustments, trying on different, you know, glasses. And I just feel like I can't see. So you guys, bear with me. I'm getting back into the grind. I'm trying really, really hard to get a video or two out for you this week. But I just wanted to say hello. I am back. And you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today. So you know what to do. Sit back and relax. Grab yourself a beverage. And let's get into the royal daily tea. So I feel really sad today. I feel like I've lost a close family friend. Matthew Perry, who played Chandler Bing on Friends, has passed away at the age of 54. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been watching Friends since it came out in the 1990s, and I watch reruns of Friends almost on a nightly basis. The Golden Girls and Friends are literally my comfort shows. When there's nothing on TV, I always turn to the reruns of The Golden Girls and Friends. So now when I watch Friends, it is going to be with a lot of melancholy and sadness when I see Chandler Bing. I cannot believe he has passed away, you guys. It is so sad to see people pass away at such a young age. We all know that addiction is the devil. When it gets a hold of you, some people, unfortunately, just cannot beat their addiction. And he has dealt with an addiction pretty much most of his adult life. He did come out with a book a couple of years ago detailing his problem with addiction. So all I can say is rest in peace, Matthew Perry. You really were a friend to me and I will greatly miss you. So James Middleton, the younger brother of Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has welcomed a beautiful and healthy bouncing baby boy with his lovely wife, Alizé. Now he shared the very first images of his baby boy on Instagram, where he said, quote, he has been in our lives for just a few weeks, but they have been the most special of my life getting to know our beautiful baby boy. No matter how prepared I thought I was, I was not prepared for the overwhelming emotion of meeting Inagio for the very first time and the love for my darling Alizé as we become three. Now, according to Name Barry, Inagio is of Spanish descent and means fiery. But a lot of people, if you are fans of the movie The Princess Bride, you remember that famous scene where the guy says, I am Inagio Montoyo. You have killed my father. Prepare to die. That is a very famous movie, and I love that movie, by the way. So a lot of people are wondering, did he name his son after the Princess Bride? Now the site adds, Inagio, almost unknown in the United States, is a very intriguing choice with its strong beat, creative and evocative sound, and association with the great early British architect and stage designer, Inagio Jones. So people are wondering, did he name his son after this architect or perhaps the Princess Bride? I'm going to say the Princess Bride. But all I got to say to James Middleton and his wife, congratulations 
on the birth of your beautiful son. So I ended up watching the Beckhams, which actually should have been called David Beckham because the docu-series that was done on Netflix was really more about David Beckham, in my opinion, than actually his private life with Victoria Beckham. It was more about his career and his humble beginnings, how he rose the ranks to become one of the greatest footballers in history, in my opinion. And then it did talk about Victoria, their relationship, their marriage. They didn't really go into the kids really deep. It really wasn't that much behind the scenes of their personal life. But it talked about the personal struggles that they went through and how he dealt with it. And to me, that was the biggest takeaway was that I got the most respect for David Beckham. I mean, first of all, the man is gorgeous. I mean, let's be real here. That man is gorgeous. Talk about winning the lottery in life, looking like David Beckham, and then having a real talent to play football, or as we say in America, soccer. That man is doubly blessed. Then you add a beautiful wife and a beautiful family. Now, one of the greatest things that I really admire about David Beckham was his sense of family, his sense of loyalty, and how even though he's a super rich mega star, he is a very humble person. I still remember when the queen had passed away and he sat there in line with thousands upon thousands of people in the queue, didn't pull the, do you know who I am? I'm David Beckham. He didn't try to jump the queue. He waited for hours to pay his respect to the queen. And it is so sad that someone who didn't have a relationship with the queen showed her more respect than her own grandson. And yes, we're talking about Prince Harry. So there are some valuable lessons and takeaways that I feel that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle could have learned from David Beckham. And I have to say, I didn't really know how great that he was at his, his sport. I just knew he was, you know, a famous, you know, footballer and he was very good looking. And of course, he's married to Posh Spice. He has his own brand. He's kind of like a celebrity. But when I really watched the documentary, you really learned a lot about him. His work ethic, his humble beginnings, his moral compass, and his strong bond to loyalty, to his passion, soccer, to working hard and his number one to his family. Harry could learn so much from David Beckham. So David Beckham started off around 15 or so playing for Manchester United. He was a very young boy. So his coach kind of became like a second father to him because he was such a young boy, kind of helped raise David Beckham alongside his father. So David Beckham is known for Bend It Like Beckham. He broke records, and I think he played what they call the corners, which is something his father always taught him, is play the corners, because every game in life is going to come down to the corners. And his father was right. His father was very, very tough on David Beckham, never overpraising him, always pushing him to try harder. And that valuable lesson that he learned from his father really put him through his adulthood when he was facing some really trying times in his professional life. So David Beckham was known as kind of the golden boy of soccer. Victoria Beckham used to tease him and and say he had golden balls because everything he touched turned to gold. Well, there was a very poignant moment in David Beckham's career when he was at the height of his popularity. He did a split second choice, a split second decision, which haunts him to this day. Now, it was during the World Cup, I believe 98, 99, 
that year he was playing and he did a split second where an opponent kind of pushed him down and he kind of put his foot up and he kind of kicked him. He got kind of like a foul and he got ejected from the World Cup, meaning he got kicked out of the game permanently and he could no longer play. Now, in my opinion, they put a lot of pressure on David Beckham as the golden boy his team depended on him to help them to a victory. So here they are at the World Cup, and he just does like a little kickback. He gets ejected from the game, which is like unheard of. I mean, it was really unheard of to be kicked out for something like that. And of course, they lose. Everyone turned on David Beckham. That old saying, you know, people build you up and they build you up and they put you on a pedestal and then they knock you down. His own fans turned against him. Talk about people hating you. David Beckham went from the golden boy to the most hated person in the UK. People would walk up to him and spit in his face. The paparazzi, the newspapers blamed him, calling him a stupid boy for that one split second mistake. And he said in his documentary, he still regrets it to this day, what, 27 plus years? That's his biggest regret. So for almost two years, people booed him. We're talking stadiums packed with thousands of people, your own fans boo you. Every time he walked into the stadium, they would boo him. They would call him wanker. They would yell at him. There was even people who had posters of like dummies wearing his jersey, number seven, being hung by a noose. Can you imagine facing people who hate you? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry could never, never face the music because they're cowards. And he didn't even do anything bad. He simply did a little kick because he was irritated with the player, kind of knocked him down. He did a little split second and it cost him two years of hell. Now, Harry and Meghan did a lot worse, in my opinion, to the royal family and especially to Her Majesty the Queen. And what do they do? They go and cry on Oprah. I'm going to cry on Oprah about my poor privileged life because my daddy cut off my funding. And they wouldn't stop the negative stories about Megan. You know, Megan, who made such a sacrifice, gave up her dead acting career and moved over the seas to a palace with designer gowns and a staff full of people. But she was a prisoner. She only had 10 vacations in 18 months. But she's a prisoner, y'all. She gave up so much of her life that the sky captain sat down and thanked her for her sacrifice of working 72 royal engagements in 18 months. But David Beckham sat there for two years, went game after game after game with people, stadiums full of people booing him, hating him. And then they expected him to perform on top of that. Yeah, the papers were writing horrific things, not only about David, but now Victoria Beckham. They were blaming his wife for his downfall. So for two years, he had to endure this hatred until one day. He was playing at a game, and this brought tears to my eyes, and I'm sorry I don't remember the game, but he was playing, and he wasn't doing well. His team, they were losing. They were losing, and the crowd who had been abusing him for two years, all of a sudden, when they see their hero is laying on the ground, and they have beaten him to the ground, all of a sudden, the stadium starts chanting, there is only one David Beckham. There is only one David Beckham. And he looks up into this audience of people who for two years beat him down are now telling him, we need our hero. We need you back. And he turned into the phoenix rising from the ashes. And he sees his family out in the crowd. And now the crowd is chanting, there's only one David Beckham, there's only one David Beckham. 
and something clicks. He comes up like that phoenix, y'all, and they win the game. And now they have their hero back. But for two years, he endured horrific treatment from the press from his own fans, from the opposing fans, even his coach, the man who helped raise him from 15, who was a father figure, threw him under the bus when he made that little mistake in the World Cup. And he never bad-mouthed his coach or anybody publicly. He kept his head down and he took it. He took the punishment and he earned back the people's respect. To me, that is something that Harry could learn a lesson from, but instead, they never take responsibility for any of their actions. Instead, their Crimea River were such victims when they weren't. But the biggest thing is why didn't David quit? And he said, I didn't quit because it was my father's dream to have a son play for Manchester United. He's worth millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. He could have said, F you, I'm out. But he didn't because he didn't want to disappoint his father. Wow. Now, can you just imagine if Harry had a fifth of the royal kahunas? that David Beckham had. That man took so much abuse and he did it day after day. He took his lumps and all and he became the hero from the ashes. But Harry, the whiny prince who was the golden boy, okay, he was the golden boy and they knocked him down off his pedestal, but he keeps whining and complaining, not taking any responsibility and then he does more and more and more and more to the point where I don't think he's ever going to be revived. I think he's dead and buried as far as people in the UK are concerned. I don't know if this man will ever be able to come back to the UK at the level that he used to be. So my opinion is he could have learned so much from David and Victoria Beckham. Harry and Meghan really made a mistake by not treating them well and by not being friends with them because David and Victoria are a class act and they've been doing this for well over 20 years and Harry and Meghan barely five years in the hole and they're not doing very well. So I think Harry and Meghan need to watch the docuseries and maybe they can learn something about humility, taking responsibility, keeping your mouth shut Quit playing the victim and be appreciative of where you come from, son. You got everything in the entire world to be grateful, yet you and your wife are constantly crying and you're so sad and everything is so negative. But Victoria Beckham and David Beckham, I just have the most respect for him. And I highly recommend you watch that documentary because it was so inspiring And I like the fact that he's such a humble, respectful person who puts his family first, loyalty first. That is something that little Prince Harry never learned. So anyways, that's all I have to say on that subject. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. And I hope to see y'all in the next video. I have a lot of videos coming out very, very soon. If you liked my video and you like my channel, please be sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell. We're trying to get to over 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.